fish. But I'm getting you too old to do that. Fish. <laughs> yes, you do. We do. But anyways, <laughs> I, I've been so blessed with all the things I get to do in my life. I have officiated 143 funerals this year. Oh, yeah, and you know, um, so I have an understanding of things. Our losses are not easy. And like I said, losing Loretta was hard for me, but I, I understand it. And you know, we can't live forever. She was 90 years old. But that don't mean I don't have the greatest memories of anybody that ever had. I remember one time we were down Sterling Heights and we were at uh, the Premier Center and, and Loretta finished her show. She changed into her clothes, all except her shoes, and I carried her to the bus so she didn't have to walk on stone. And, um, and then we followed the bus because they did a three-day stay and then she went to the Holiday Inn and in between there and, get, and there she had pulled her hair straight down, put her long nightgown on. She come down off the bus, she looked both ways, and she ran into the hotel. She said, Lord, I hope nobody sees me. <laughs> but, but just stories like that. I have, I have a book deal that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be writing the mem my memoirs of, of the, the things that I know, and there's so many stories. I couldn't even begin to share them with you today. But I want to do the old rugged cross for you today. <clears throat> that means a lot to me. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for the world of lost sinners was slain and so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down and i will claim shame and reproach gladly bear for he'll call me someday to my home far away where forever in his glory I'll share and so I'll cherish the old rugged I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear him to dark Calvary. And so I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. And I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And exchange it someday for a
Okay, uh, she was, I think she was nominated in uh, 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And all kinds of crazy stuff happened in the world. And, uh, and uh, so anyway, it got postponed and then it got postponed and then it got postponed. And we finally uh, officially um, got her <coughs> officially into the Michigan Fiddlers Hall of Fame at Hastings yesterday at the COA, but uh, we couldn't find the plaque. <laughs> it was, it, you know, with all this stuff going on and things, the trailers shuffled this and there and this and there and whatever, and, and they, it got hidden in there, but so. Anyway, but we found it. We, we got it right now, and it says uh, Paula Brody, Fiddler's Hall of Fame, Hillsdale, Michigan, August 15th, 2020, which uh, I guess happened. <laughs> Uh, at that time, it was Kenneth Moore, president of the Michigan Fiddlers Association. I'm, I'm now the president of the Fiddlers, and I don't know if, if it's a good thing or not. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna shake your hand. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Paula, Paula Brody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just thanks, I mean, I attribute it partly coming to the barn all the time on Sundays, because I get my practice in. But thank you, Bob. Hey, uh, another round of applause for her. It's not easy. Uh, next week will be Bar Barker and Broski from Ypsilanti, Michigan, coming here. They, they've been here before. They do a good job. And uh, did I say something wrong right then? No. Oh. oh, yeah. Yeah, Chuck's going to be back here on Father's Day. All you guys who uh, don't like to fish, you know where to come.